Here we see the reference to the new covenant. Verse 32, or verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which is talking about the covenant delivered to Moses, right? Moses led them out of Egypt, which my covenant, they break. So even in Jeremiah's day, which is still Old Testament, which is still under the time of Moses' law, clearly people didn't, weren't keeping the law to be saved because he already said they broke it. Right. In fact, they broke it before Moses could even come down from the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> he has the law in his hands, and what does he do? Throws on the ground, and they, they're broken, right? It's symbolic of just the broken law, yeah. like, immediately of how imperfect human beings are, just representative of that. Why? Because he came down and they had already made idols and they're doing all this other stuff. They're partying up and doing other. Like, what are you guys doing? Right. Like, you clearly see I'm here talking with the Lord and bringing instruction and, and you do this? This is that first covenant. This is that old covenant which no one was ever able to keep. Not according to the covenant, again, verse 32, that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. So this is important because some people will try to make a claim later. We're going to spend the majority of time in Romans 11, believe it or not, and I have to hurry to make that the majority. Um, they claim that there's this, this other covenant, this extra covenant with the children of Israel in order to have this special place for Jews in end times events. But there's only two covenants. There's only two testaments. It's a covenant and a testament are, are, are the same thing. There's a, this is the covenant. And this is what we clearly see in scripture. You'd be hard pressed to prove to me that there's any other, you know, covenants, testaments. I know people say there's an Abrahamic covenant, but it's still a covenant of faith. You know, the, the, the circumcision was a token, a sign of what? Of their faith. Verse number 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. This is a salvation found in the new covenant, which is brought in with Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, then we go into the context of them never ceasing to exist, right? The nation, the seed of Israel never ceased. Well, it comes right after he's saying there's this new covenant and you're going to be saved, right? So I think there's room to say that, that who's the Israel talking about there? It's saved Israel that he's talking about never ceasing from being a nation. 